Hello, in this section of the tutorial on the TI-84 uh, calculator, we're going to talk about two very, very important things that are going to help you get a lot of use out of your calculator. The first one is the math button here, uh, which leads to the math menu. And the second thing that we'll talk about toward the end is the catalog menu, which is down here in uh, blue, right above the zero sign. So if you look at the calculator here, there are a lot of buttons on the on the thing obviously and there are a lot of functions you know sine cosine tangent square square root there's a lot of things here that we've talked about but I think you all know that this calculator can do a whole lot more uh, functions than the number of buttons that we actually have on the calculator in other words there aren't enough buttons to do everything so because of that they created a math menu so when you click that you're going to be taken to the math menu it's one of the most useful and frequently visited things that you're going to um, use in this calculator so it's it's really important for you to understand what's in here and we're going to spend some time exploring this in the subsequent sections um, but basically you go to the math menu and you'll see that there's four menus at the top there's math which is sort of func things related uh, to, ba to basic arithmetic uh, there's the number menu that you get to by going to the right uh, there's some things here we'll talk about in a second these are <clears throat> these are dealing with numbers and then uh, you go over again, you get to complex, that's what CPX means. Complex, for those of you who aren't sure, it's just uh, you know imaginary numbers when you have a real part and an imaginary part to a number. So everything in this menu is going to be dealing with imaginary numbers, complex numbers. So if you have a complex number that you're dealing with in your class, then you'll be using the things in this menu. And then the final part of the math menu is the probability menu, PRB, probability. So almost all of your probability functions, this is to generate a random number here. Um, this is uh, permutation, combination, factorial, things like that. These are in here. We're going to be going in and, and using these in the subsequent sections of the course, but I just want you guys to know that these are all here. So don't be afraid to go into the math menu and play around. Um, so, so let's start over here and say, okay, I would like to cube something. I would take like to take five and raise it to the power of three. Uh, well, there is no cube button on my calculator here anywhere. There's an x squared button, but there's no cube button. So if I put five here and then say, okay, I'm gonna go into the math menu, and then I just go down until I hit the cube part, and then go ahead and hit enter, then it's going to put 5Q on the stack. Now I haven't actually done the calculation yet. I've just put, put it here in the display. I hit enter and then it's going to evaluate that answer. So you see how easy it is to get into the math menu to get what you're looking for. Uh, if you don't see a button on the calculator for what you're trying to find, then go and check it out and look, look for it in the math menu. Now, there, there, it's not the best example here because there is this button on the calculator, the uh, exponent button. So I can take five and raise it to any power I want, including, including you know, the power of three, and I'll get the same answer. But I guess they figured that since cube is used so frequently, you know, much like x squared, that they would go ahead and put a, a button here in the calculator. Uh, and same kind of thing, if you wanted to take, you know, uh, you know, 256, let's say, and uh, let me go ahead and take that out. Let's say you wanted to go and take the cube root of something. So you would go here to the cube root, that's what the symbol is, and I would go ahead and hit that, and say, okay, I'm gonna take the cube root of 125, and hit enter, then I'm going to take the cube root of that and I'm going to get 5 and that's because 5 cubed is 125. Now one more thing I'm going to show you in the math menu if you look down here around number 5 you can go down to number 5 and this is the symbol for uh, taking a fourth root or taking a fifth root so instead of a square root or a cube root what if you wanted to take like a fourth root of, of a number and uh, or a fifth root of a number or something like that so the way you would do that you would you would come out here and hit the number that you want. So if you wanted a fourth root, you would hit the number four. Then you would go into the math menu and select the symbol here, which is you know the fourth root or fifth root or whatever root you're trying to take. You would hit that. And what this is telling you, you, know, you have to use your imagination a little bit. This little four is, is basically up here where the X is. That's why it's sitting out in front now. So if I'm gonna take the fourth root of uh, let's say 64 and I hit enter, then this is the answer, and that's how you input that. If I wanted to take the um, the uh, cube root, let's say, which I can I can do with this dedicated button here, but I can still use number five if I want. If I wanted to take the cube root of 27, then I'm going to get the answer of three. 
Now also, if I go in there, just to, just to prove to you that's correct, if I take the cube root here of 27, I'm going to get exactly the same answer. So if you ever have a need to take a cube root or a fourth root or a tenth root or whatever, you can just go into the math menu and just use that other button uh, here. What else do I want to talk about in the uh, in the math button? These are some other functions that we'll talk about in a minute. We're going to go over a lot of these other guys uh, here in subsequent sections. Um, there are some interesting things here we're going to use. Absolute value is something I think is easy to understand at this point. If you want to find the absolute value of, you know, negative 85, when you hit that button, it's going to stick absolute value out there for you, and you just fill in the number, and of course, absolute value of negative 85 is, is positive 85. Not a function you're going to use too much for real numbers, but for, um, for other things you might use it. Uh, we talked about complex numbers. We'll get to that later in the course. If you want to generate a random number here, you can hit that and uh, go ahead and evaluate it. It's going to generate a random number anywhere between 0 and 1. A lot of times in probability and statistics, you'll need that. We'll come back to doing that later. So the bottom line is if you are trying to find a function on your calculator, and you don't see a button for it, and you don't have your book, then go ahead and try to find it in the math menu. There's a decent chance that it's just going to be there. Now, let me also talk to you about the catalog menu down here. The catalog menu contains basically everything in the math menu, plus a whole lot of other stuff that you probably won't use very often, but it's just a comprehensive list of everything this entire calculator can do. So to get to it, second function, uh, catalog and you'll see your, it'll tell you you're in the catalog menu right here. Now if you go down you'll see that there are a ton of uh, that there are a ton of, of things here. Now some of them are easy to understand. Let's go back up to the top here. Alright, let's go back up to the top. So let's say we have absolute value. We already used that one. If I wanted to take the absolute value of of negative 3 it's going to do exactly the same thing that was in the math menu. It's going to redu return a 3. Let me go back to the catalog menu. Uh, let's see, we have, if we want to and two numbers together, that's something you might use in logic theory. If you wanted to recall the last answer, we have a button, a dedicated button for that on the calculator, last answer. But this catalog menu contains every single thing this calculator can do. So when I hit that, it's going to pop up answer, and I'm going to retrieve the last answer. It's exactly the same thing as if I had hit this guy. Whoops. If I had hit this guy, second function answer, it's going to do exactly the same thing. So the catalog menu, you're not going to go to too often um, unless, you know, it, whatever you're trying to find is not inside of the math menu. Keep in mind, some of the things in here are really advanced things. ANOVA, it's, it's a computational thing you're not going to use very often. Uh, some of these things are used only for programming the calculator, ASMCOMP. Uh, you know, some of these things as in program, assembly program, and these things are things that you're really never going to use in everyday use of the calculator. You're going to use them when you're trying to program the calculator. So you can think of the catalog as a comprehensive list of everything this calculator can do, including how to program it. Uh, and whereas the math menu is much more of an everyday use kind of thing. Now one more thing, you can see from this list, this catalog list, it's a very long list. We're still in the A's, we're just now getting into the B's. Um, you can press letters on your on your keyboard to jump around. So if you wanted to jump around to D, you would just press this button. Now notice I didn't have to hit alpha D. The calculator is smart enough to know if I want to go to E, I'll just hit this button because E is right above it. I'm going to jump to the E's and then I can scroll down a little bit more if I like. So if I want to raise E to the power of something, which I can do by the way on my keyboard by hitting E and then raising it to the power of let's say 8, uh, I can do that. But everything is listed in the catalog. Uh, what if you wanted to take um, a hyperbolic sign? So let's go over here to S because when we're looking for sign. So here's S. I'm going to hit that and we're going to go down. We have to page down a little bit to get to, to sign. S-I-N. So let's see if we can skip past all this stuff here. H coming up to S-I-N. So we have sign. So you can take the sign of a number. Of course, you have a button already on your calculator. Here's the inverse sign. You have a, a button right above it you can, you can get to with the second function. Here's the hyperbolic sign. For those of you who know what that is, it's just a math function that's defined. And um, there's no button in your, on your keyboard to do hyperbolic sign. And if you look in the math menu, hyperbolic sign is not there either. This is the only place where you can get to hyperbolic sign on this calculator. So you hit enter hyperbolic sign of you know 74 let's say hit enter and it's going to spit out a number for you, a really large number 
So I'm not going to go through the catalog uh, in detail now. We're going to hit the important parts of these functions as we go through the rest of the tutorials and we start learning how to use the calculator for everyday usage. I just wanted to show you that this math menu does exist. It's everyday things that you're going to use a great deal with this calculator. Um, and so check there first. If the function you're trying to get to is not there, go to the catalog menu. Just remember the catalog menu is really long and lengthy because it contains everything this calculator can do. You can jump around the catalog menu by, by hitting the letters or the numbers that correspond to the letters of the alphabet and you can jump around the menu. And that's it for this section. Uh, play around with it, don't be afraid of it, and uh, you'll be learning how to use this calculator uh, efficiently in no time.